Hey everyone. In my last video, I uh, had to make a small calibration weight for the microgram balance that I built. And so the challenge is how do you make a 100 microgram test mass if you don't have a scale that measures micrograms? And so I solved the problem by converting that difficult measurement challenge, you know, 100 microgram measurement into a linear size measurement. And the trick is that I used a piece of paper and made the assumption that the paper has uniform density and uniform thickness. So the idea is it's very difficult to measure 100 micrograms, but it's very easy to measure a larger piece of paper and cut it down such that the ratio will give you something that's very close to 100 micrograms. This process of converting a problem into a different space to make it easier to solve reminded me of something else that I heard a while back. So in the days before computers and before calculators and even before calculus itself, uh, there was still a desire to integrate mathematical functions. And we can do this using the paper trick. So to get started, I cut out a bunch of different pieces of paper of different size. And I was mainly interested to see what the linearity of this whole system was going to be. So I cut these from different sheets of paper. And uh, the idea is that I just you know took them one by one and um, checked their mass with this balance. And this uh, specs a uh, precision of two milligrams. And so I, I measured the mass and had the area for these various different sizes. And the mass divided by area number is actually pretty consistent. Uh, it's in, in fact, it's surprisingly good. And the smallest piece of paper I had was five by five, uh, which had a mass of 30 milligrams. So even getting all the way down to 30 milligrams, the, the mass over area number was still pretty good. So this gave me confidence that the, uh, the whole method was going to work pretty well. What's interesting is that we don't have to know anything about milligrams or millimeters or any units whatsoever. So if we were living in the days before uh, calibrated balances like this, what we could use is a two pan balance, you know, just two uh, plates that are, that are set up on a very delicate pivot. And what we could do is cut out pieces of paper and use these as the calibration masses. So if we had a whole set of these, we could put these on one side of the scale and put the piece of paper that we wanted to mass on the other side, and we'd know exactly what the balance is just by having enough of these calibration masses. Um, what's cool is that we don't even really have to measure the grid. Just as long as the grid is the same on all the pieces of paper, we can uh, make this method work without knowing anything about units. Okay, so let's start with an easy one. This is f of x equals x. And so what I did was I just drew it out with a pencil and then cut out the actual piece that we want to integrate. And we can check the mass of that and then divide by that 1.47 constant. And we get the area in terms of squares is equal to 111. And so what we're really getting here is the area under the curve. And we can check our math since we have geometry now. We uh, know that the uh, size of this triangle is one half base times the height. So a half times 15 times 15 is 112.5. So pretty close to the 111 that we got through the uh, mass measurement method. And since we also have calculus now, uh, we can do the integral here. We end up with uh, x squared over 2 plus a constant. And uh, if we evaluate all that, of course, it's 112.5. And no surprise that the x squared over 2 looks an awful lot like the 1 half base times the height. And the error turns out to be about 1.3%. So this is pretty good. Um, this is also kind of the best case scenario. Uh, since, since we're dealing only with straight lines here, uh, really what we're testing is the, the absolute best possible case for this whole measurement system. Here's a more interesting function. We have f of x equals x squared over 16. And I used the over 16 just to spread this graph out so that it worked out better for my graph paper. And I uh, plotted all the points here and just connected the points with straight lines. Uh, so we check the mass and we divide and we get 87.1. And in this case, there's no easy geometric way to uh, get the area of this. So we go straight to calculus to check it. And we have uh, x cubed over 3 times the 16, which is the original plus a constant. And we evaluate all that. And we're still within about 2.1% uh, of, <clears throat> of the real value. This method still works for functions that go below 0, too, of course. What we can do is just cut out the two pieces separately, measure the mass of this, and then subtract this from it and that will give us the total area under the curve even though some of it is negative. Likewise, if we had two functions and we wanted to find the area between them, we could just plot both of them out and then cut out the area that we wanted between them. 
So this technique is very powerful because even if we don't have a mathematical formula for our data, we can still connect all the points with lines and integrate them. For example, if you were taking data on the flow rate uh, into a reservoir or something like that, and it didn't really follow any particular mathematical function, you could still uh, connect all these points with lines and then use the, the mass trick to get the total amount of volume in the reservoir. Of course, if you're an engineer, you would just build a flow meter that did the integration mechanically, but anyway. Okay, I hope that inspires you to think of difficult measurement problems in terms of converting them into a different space in which they're easier to solve. See you next time. Bye.